Looking beyond the near term, we believe that the future supply and demand outlook for our products has rarely been more compelling. The quality and diversification of our portfolio plays really strongly into the three macro trends that underpin demand for our products. Decarbonization of energy and transport systems, the drive for improving living standards for the growing population in the world, and food security. For example, in copper, which is vital to the transition to a low carbon world, we have in Quebec a mine that is ramping up strongly and on track to produce between 310 and 350,000 tons of copper in 2023. And we have additional high quality organic growth options in copper in Chile and also at Sakati in Finland. Turning to food security, we are developing Woodsmith, our polyhalite project in the UK. It is a world class ore body by any measure. Food security for 10 billion people and delivering that food sustainably is a key challenge for the agricultural industry. Our organic poly 4 product, which from 2027 will be produced from the polyhalite found at Woodsmith, can increase crop yields by around 3 to 5 percent. It will have a carbon footprint that is 85 percent lower than alternative products. Its natural, physical, chemical properties improve soil health and structure, and it barely needs any processing at all. It'll be a cornerstone, long life, low cost asset, delivering strong cash flow for many, many decades to come. Over the past six months, we have continued to work towards achieving the targets and goals that we set ourselves in our sustainable mining plan. These ambitions are more important than ever, as our investors and society more broadly expect companies such as ours to show leadership. At the same time, our customers expect that provenance in their products that they buy from us. We are making encouraging progress towards our goal to be carbon neutral across our operations by 2040. Our scope one and two emissions have barely increased despite a 10% increase in production volumes. And we are on target to be drawing approximately 60% of our global grid supply from renewable sources from 2025. And that covers all of our South America and Australia operations. On scope one, we have been forming partnerships to tackle methane emissions from our steel making coal operations, which represent the largest component of our scope one emissions. And we're doing similar work when it comes to our scope three emissions. For example, in April, we signed an agreement with Swedish hydrogen and steel producers, H2 Green Steel. Together, we'll be exploring ways to use our premium iron ore as feedstock for their direct reduced iron or DRI production processes, which is a lower carbon way of producing steel. More than 80% of our global assets are located in water constrained areas. To mitigate our impact, we're applying our technical expertise to reduce water dependence on fresh water and accelerate progress towards ending wet tailing storage. This will primarily be achieved through the combined technologies of coarse particle recovery and hydraulic dewatered stacking. In the immediate term, the external landscape is very unsettled. So over the next six months, we will be focused on what we can control and on operational efficiency maintaining safe and responsible production, and at the same time, reducing our costs. But as always, our priority will be keeping our people safe from harm.